you must know that when God holds you in the hollow of his hand, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. Almighty God, full of love. And you know what? Beyond the shadow of a doubt, he loves us. He loves his children. We are the people of God. And you know something? When God loves you, there will be problems. But he will love you through your problems. Give you the victory. Stand you on the higher ground. This is what God does for us. In the midst of all of your problems, he will love
God, in the name of Jesus, here we are to tell you that we love you. We thank you, we bless you, we adore you, we lift you. We magnify you and we thank you for everything that you've done. If it hadn't been for the Lord who was on our side, we don't know where we would be, but God, we thank you that you're on our side. Thank you that you didn't give up on us. Thank you that you didn't let us go. Thank you that you didn't throw the towel on us. God, we bless you today. We magnify you and we love you. Now have your way. Your anointing is already here. Your power is already here. And we bless you in this place today. Thank you for revival. Revive us again. Renew us. Restore us, God. Bless us. Touch us. Keep us and be with us. Touch this, your daughter, and anoint these lips of clay. We thank you for precision of speech and clarity of thought. We thank you for the anointing that makes preaching easy. Now you have your way in this place. And we give your name praise, glory, and honor. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we do say, amen. 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 Will you clap your hands and give God a praise of God? I'm honored to be here yet again. I'm honored to be able to grace you again. It is an honor, it is a privilege, and it is a pleasure. And whenever we have the opportunity to give the word of God to his people, we don't take it lightly, nor do we take it for granted. So I'm just honored to be here. I thank God for all of you looking so good at this choir. You know they sang. Come on, give God praise yes. for this choir. Amazing. Yes. Looking for the time and another chance. They just always sing so good and so melodious. I love it. I love it. I love it. So thank God for all of you. Amen. To the angel of this house, come on and give God great praise. Clap your hands. Come on. Clap your hands. He is an amazing man of God, and he is always so friendly, always so kind. And a couple years ago, we found out that we don't live too far from one another. So when I see him and when he sees me, we always got a nice, hearty, healthy wave and a laugh. And a, a, it's just good to see him. It's good to be around good people. Amen. God said he'll put you, uh, he'll make your name great, and he'll put you around great men, and I'm honored to be around a wonderful and amazing man of God. And to his lovely wife, I thank God for her. I give praise and honor to God for her as well. Amen. To my husband of 23 years, he wasn't able to make it today, but he kissed me on the forehead and prayed for me, and he said, go ahead on and let me know how it is when you get back. We all cover him in prayer. He's been having a little pain in his side, but we know that God is a healer. Yes. Amen? Yes. And we speak healing into his body even now. I'm not going to be labor at the time. I'm not going to be long. I'm going to give to you what the Lord has given to me, and I'm going to be in and out of your way. I feel that there's a power in here. God's going to do some amazing things. I don't feel about that. Now, this is revival. Did you come to be revived? Yes. Did you come to be renewed? Did you come to be restored? So we're going to give to you what the Lord has given to us. If I can have a little more volume on the mic, that would be wonderful. I don't know how to say it, but take out the fuzziness and give me some trouble or whatever y'all say. Amen. Mark 8, 23 through 25. Sounds better, sounds better, sounds better. Mark 8, 23, 24, and 25. I'm going to give to you as the Lord has given it to me. And the Bible says, And he took the blind man by the hand. And he led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, he put his hands upon him. And he asked him if he saw it. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again. Somebody say again. Upon his eyes. And he made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. What to use for a subject today, Lord, touch me again. Lord, touch me again. Today I want to talk about the touch of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you look at the word touch, to touch is to come in contact with. Whenever you come in contact with the power of the Lord, then you will see change take place. Whenever you come in contact with the power, your life will be altered and changed forever. If you look at Genesis, you find that there was an angel who touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh. And he was left with a limp, but he got a name change. 
Whenever you have a touch with the power of God, then you will be changed. In Luke, we see that there was a woman with an issue of blood who touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And the Bible lets us know that she was made whole. She was healed and whole. And so we find that the word touch in the Greek is haptomai, which means to modify, it means to influence, it means to alter or change, and it means to impact. So once you have had a touch by Jesus Christ, you will be modified, influenced, altered, changed, and impacted. Your life will never be the same. There are times when we need a touch from the master. There are times when we just need him to touch us. We need him to lift us up, to let us know that he's with us, to encourage us, to touch us. And then there are times when we need again and again touch. And I hear you. We need an again and an again touch. We need him to touch us more than once. And so I want to address today a, a touch from the Lord and how it alters your destiny and change your lives. And so through this passage of scripture, which we will use as our backdrop, I want to talk about three touches from the Lord Jesus Christ and the impact that they had. So let's look at this particular passage of scripture. Here we see that Jesus comes into the town and the people bring a man to Jesus. The people begin to beg Jesus to touch him. Now, there is no mention as to why the people bring this blind man to Jesus. Some scholars say because he didn't have enough faith on his own. Some say that he lacked faith. Other scholars or theologians say because they were growing tired or weary of seeing him struggle. But we really don't know why they bring this man to Jesus. But we do know the good news is they got him to Jesus. Sometimes you need some folk around you that can get get you to Jesus. Sometimes you need some people to say, I don't know what's going on, but I do know that if you can get in the presence of the Lord Jesus, your life will be changed. I'm reminded in my mind about a man who was paralyzed, a man in the Bible who could not walk. He was laying on his bed of affliction and Jesus was in the house and he had people around him who couldn't get through the door because of the crowd, but they went to the top of the house, the rooftop, and they still got him to Jesus. Sometimes uh, you got to get around some folk that's going to get you to Jesus at all costs. Uh, they begin to tear up the roof, they remove the obstacles, and they got him to Jesus. Uh, because when you get to Jesus, your life will be changed. It will never be the same. When you have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and he touches you, uh, you will remember it forever. Do I have anybody that's ever been touched? by the Lord Jesus. Uh, so the good news is that they got him to Jesus. You're in the season right now to where you need to get to Jesus. Many of us have desperate needs. Uh, we have things in our lives that we need the Lord Jesus to handle for us. Some of us, it may be our children, it may be our family, it may be our husbands, it may be our wives, it may be our marriages, uh, it may be the things that we're going through on the job. We may have issues in our bodies. We may have health issues. Uh, we may have issues of low self-esteem. We may have internal issues. Uh, we may have uh, issues where we're stressed out or burnt out. Uh, and we need to get to Jesus. Uh, it is a 911. It is an emergency situation. We've got to get to Jesus at all costs. Uh, no matter what comes, no matter what goes, we know that the only one that can fix this here is Jesus. <laughs> Yes, we, we got to get to him. We're in a constant struggle. Uh, we've been in agonizing pain. Some of us have pain in our bodies, pain in our hearts. Uh, we've been heartbroken. The relationship didn't work out. We're struggling. We're having issues. Uh, but I come to let you know that there is a touch uh, from the master that will alter your life. Uh, you don't have to be weary. The Bible says be not weary and well doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Can I share with you that it's reaping time? You get ready to reap where you didn't even sow. Can I put, put your hands together and give it away? Yes, yes. So he, he, he wants to get this man to Jesus. So we find that they took the blind man to Jesus and they begin to beg Jesus to give him his sight. So the first thing we want to talk about is the first touch.
touch. The first touch here, the Bible says that Jesus takes him by the hand. He has contact with him. He touches him. And the first thing that he does is he leads him out of the city. Some of us are in need of one touch where God can pull us out. Can I talk to somebody in here? He pulls him out of a place of familiarity, a place of comfortability. Uh, too many of us have gotten comfortable. We need God to touch us and bring us out because uh, we're losing it. We're going crazy. Some things are happening in our lives. But oh God, can you just come get me? I need to get out of where I am. Can you trust God to take you by the hand and pull you out of your circle of comfortability? Out and away from the things that you have become to rely on, that you've become comfortable with, out and away from your place of stagnancy where you just become complacent, you're not moving, you're just there. Sometimes God needs to touch you and bring you out. And I'm finding that so many times we're in a place of comfortability until people will make it comfortable for where we are. We're blind and they're making it comfortable for us. They're making excuses for us. We don't have vision, but they're enabling us to continue without the vision that God wants to give us. They begin to make accommodations for our foolishness. Can I talk to somebody in here? Ah, you're having emotional breakdowns, and they say, that's all right, you know how it is. She's just having a difficult time. It's all right, honey. Oh, it's okay. You can go off on as many folk as you want to. You don't know her story. Wait a minute. Sometimes you need some folk around and say, you now, girl, you done lost your mind. You have acted like you are going stone crazy. This is not who you are. This is not who you're going to be. You're coming out of a place of familiarity. Have you ever been there where they say, well, this is, I've always been like this. My mama was like this. My daddy was like this. If I got to get you told, I'm just going to get you told. And they make accommodations for your blindness. They make accommodations for your comfortability when God wants to bring you out. They make accommodations for your spiritual inconsistencies. They excuse your temper tantrums and impatient attitudes. And when things don't go your way and you cut the nut, they're just, well, that's just how he is. It's going to be all right. No, no, no. You're too comfortable being blind. You're too comfortable without no vision. Clap your hands and give him birth. Yes, instead of wanting you to get free, they accommodate your blindness. But the first touch that you need from the Lord Jesus Christ is to pull you out of your state of comfortability. Because you've got to be delivered. You've got to be healed. You've got to be free. You can't keep going on like this. Day after day, month after month, week after week, year after year, the same old, same old. I want something different in my life. I want to see the miracle signs and wonders. I want to see God work some things out. I'm tired of being complacent where I am. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired of being sick and sick of being tired. I'm tired, I'm weary, I'm lonely, I'm poor. I need something new. I need God to do a new thing in my life. I need him to overturn, overturn, overturn some things in my life. But how can he do it? He's got to take you by the hand and pull you out. You ought to tell him, touch me and pull me out. So he pulls him out of the city. The Bible says he leads him out. Can I share with you that when God begins to lead you out of the place of comfortability, he then creates an atmosphere for your deliverance. There is an atmosphere that is created for your healing because you no longer can rely on people. You got to rely on him. Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but I will remember the name of the Lord Jesus. You got to remember the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. I got to run into Jesus. Friends can't help me. People can't help me. The doctor can't help me. The lawyer can't help me. But pull me out from my familiarity and get me into a place that creates an atmosphere for a shift. An atmosphere for change. An atmosphere Atmosphere for deliverance. Get me out of my comfort zone so that I can rely on you and only you, God. I want you to know here that he pulls him out of the city. And the Bible would have us to know that he then creates 
healing salve from spittle and dirt. There is much debate as to why Jesus did this. Can I share with you the research that I found? One commentary said that his eyes were possibly welded together because he had been blind for so long. And so he uses the spittle and the dirt to moisten up the eyelids and begin to open the eyes. Here, I don't know exactly, that's what commentary tells me, but he does take his spittle and he takes the clay and the dirt and he makes a healing salve. And here, here, he finds that he, what he does is when he takes this salve, he begins to place it on the eyes of the blind man. That's the second touch. He touches him again and places the healing salve on the eyes. And if I go ahead on with what the theologians say, that the eyes were closed shut. So this second touch allows him to open his eyes. He pulls you out of the city, touches you once. He touches your eyes with a healing salve so that you can be opened to what's going around in your surroundings. Too many of us are blinded. Our natural eyes are open, but our spiritual eyes are closed. We can't see what God is doing. We don't know what he's saying. We can't see a shift in the atmosphere. We can't see when God is moving. We can't feel his miracle working power because our spiritual eyes are closed, but our natural eyes are open. We've got to ask God to open my spiritual eyes and allow me to be like the sons of Issachar. Anybody remember? could discern the times so much and so until the people would listen to their directive about what, what, God, what God was doing in that season. And so when you have the spiritual eye gauges so you can see the atmosphere shifting, you can see what God is doing, you got to say, shift me, open my eyes so that my spiritual senses will be heightened. God to use you. He wants to bless you. He wants to open doors. He wants to show you miracle signs and wonders. He wants to show you healing and deliverance. But he can't do it because your spiritual eyes have been welded shut. And all you can see is in the natural. All oh, that you got to say, I want to live in the spirit. I don't want to walk after the flesh. Because when you walk after the flesh, you do mind the things of the flesh. But when you walk after the spirit, you find the things of the spirit. What is God saying in the spirit realm? How does he want you to hear him? How does he want you to see him? What is he doing? How is he elevating? How is he touching? How is he moving? How is he blessing? How is he opening doors? How is he making ways? I don't want to be blind to what God is doing. So put the healing salve on my eyes and open them up. Clap your hands. Second touch is to open your eyes. He touches him because when the eyes are open in the spirit realm, then you can see clearly what God is doing. And I'm almost done here. He touches him a third time. When he opens his eyes, after he puts the spittle on his eyes, he says, what is it that you see now? He says, I can see a little bit, but I do see men as trees. In other words, the first touch got me out. The second touch created an atmosphere for deliverance and I can feel it is coming because I can see my miracle. My eyes are open and I can see more than I've ever seen before. I see men. They're looking like trees, but I can still see. And so my eyes are open. Sometimes you gotta tell God, I know you're doing something in the spirit realm, but clear it up for me. Let me know exactly what you're doing. I know you're moving because I feel your presence. I had dreams and visions about what you're doing, so I know you're up to something. But will you clear me up so I can see exactly how you want to move? What do you want to do for me? How do you need me to do in this season? How do you want to use me? Songwriter said, you can use me until you use me up. I don't care how you use me, just use me. I want to see clearly what you're doing in this season and in this hour. And so he says, I can see men, but they look 
like trees. They look like trees. I'm able to see, but not clearly. And so the Bible says, now Jesus touches him one more time. You want to say, God, touch me one more time. Oh my God. He touches him one more time. And this is the third touch. The first touch leads him out of his place of comfortability. The second touch opens his eyes so he can see what's happening. And then the third touch clears everything up, gives him vision, and gives him restoration. We need God to touch me one more time and restore me. What does it mean to restore? To give me back. Give me back my dreams. Give me back my vision. Give me back my anointing. Give me back my joy. Give me back my love. Give me back my peace. Give me back everything that the devil stole from me. I want to be restored. I want to be renewed. I want you to do some unusual things in my life, but I gotta be able to see it. I gotta be able to see it. I gotta be able to see it. We need God to touch us again. The Bible says, the Bible says that the blind man was completely restored. In other words, he didn't struggle about seeing men as trees anymore. He didn't have any trouble getting out of the city. But he had everything back that he lost. And I'll come to let you know that you're getting it all back. God's going to restore you. God's going to bless you. He's going to touch you. He's going to open doors. He's not slack concerning his promise when he said it, he's going to do it. And the Bible lets us know that he's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, put your foot on it because it's going to happen. Touch me again, God. Touch me so I can be restored. Touch me so I can be renewed. Touch me so I can have vision. Touch me so I can know what you're doing. Touch me one more time. Put your hand But God set you up to bless you. He set you up to open doors for you. He set you up to let you know that he's ready to touch you. He's ready to deliver you. He's ready to bring you out. And he's ready to make a way out of the way. If you believe God, he can do anything but fail. But you've got to trust him when you can't trust him. You've got to tell God, I believe God.
pardon of your sins. Hallelujah. There may be someone in this auditorium who needs to know Jesus. I was talking to you today and you said, I want to touch from the master. For God so loved the world. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so the son is Jesus. He died on the cross so that we can have eternal life. And if you're here and you don't know who Jesus is in the part of your sin, now is your time. You can come and get to know him in a real way. You can sup with him and he'll sup with you. Hallelujah. He'll walk with you. He'll talk with you. He'll tell you he's his, you're his own. You'll be able to say the joy that we share as we tarry there. No, no, no. Has ever known. He's here today to heal. He's here today to save. He's here today to deliver. He's here today to set you free. If you do not know him, come to this altar right now. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. It's open. Hallelujah. We want to know him in a real way. In the pardon of our sins. So that he can touch us. Your heart may have been pricked today. Your spirit may have been pricked today. If you're here and you do not know him, come now. Hallelujah. Mm. Come to Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Come now. Come now. Come now. He's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room.